Welcome to a quick tutorial going over Adobe Lightroom versus Affinity Photo. Now a question in photo circles that I always hear is which editing app do you use? So today I just wanted to do a brief overview, not so much in depth of all of the tools, but just kind of the layouts and what the others two look like. So if you're considering either of the applications, which one you should get. So first we'll open up Affinity Photo and so you can see this is the photo that we're looking at today. It's just one that I took. Some flowers, nicely composed, good centering, a little overexposed around the edges. We could get more detail. So first, opening an Affinity Photo. This is the workspace. And then basically all you have to do to get it, you just click open with Affinity Photo, load it in really simply. So as you see here, this is the layout. Now one difference between Affinity Photo and Lightroom is Affinity is kind of a combination of both of the applications, Lightroom and Photoshop. On the left you see the tools which look more like Photoshop and so here your healing brushes, you know, your fills, cropping tools, uh, your selection tools, movement, um, spot removal, all of those are useful but what I want to focus is on is over here on this side. Um, and what we see here is all of the adjustments in this screen. Now this is these are what you'll see mainly in Adobe Lightroom if you purchase it. What I like to use often, I love the curve editor, channel mixer, vibrance, and then shadows and highlights. And to me it's really well laid out. Now it's not as clean as it looks for Adobe Lightroom but it is very nice in terms of uh, how easy it is to access. Now, a huge difference between the two is cost. The reason that many people choose this one over another one um, is that it's a one-time payment. So it's a one-time payment of $50, um, and it gets you pretty much, as I said, Adobe and Affinity in one package. Um, and to that people, it's worth its money, and it's to me, it's proven worth it. Um, so here first we'll just go through and do a few simple edits so you can see what it looks like. So we could go to the curves here and let's see on this side we just want to bring it up a little bit. Bring this down to bring out those flowers. Let's lighten it up around. Go to shadows. As you can see it's pretty simplistic tools so it allows you a lot of play and everything. Now one thing that a lot of people like Adobe, and which I like it for, is how nice the interface is. It's very easy to understand, very easy to navigate, even if you don't have a lot of experience with photo editing apps. This one I would say is a little bit more advanced, um, but if you can understand how to control it, it offers a whole lot of creative ability with it. So, you know, it's just all of the usual sliders, everything you want there. And then the layers and then down at the bottom of, of here's all the layers Let's go back to this one you have some other effects so you have masking layers you have your adjustments that you've already done layer effects um, so you can do your gaussian blurs throw on gradients through all of this um, and there's a whole plethora of everything that you can do so just keep in mind that for this app it's a one-time payment and that is a huge thing so you can just pay that investment and you can make a return on that pretty fast now if we go to look at Lightroom I talked about with Lightroom that it is much more simple of an interface you know you upload all of your photos into your library and then you can edit it there and it stores it basically in the cloud and so you can access them a lot easier while Affinity does not have that so here you can as I said, it's a much more easy to understand interface exactly what you're looking like, and it looks a little bit nicer. Um, so you're able to just control these faster. But really what it comes down to is that for this app, it is an expensive subscription. So you have the continual monthly payment. If you're a student, it's cheaper, around uh, $15 a month um, for the entire Adobe suite, or you can go for $10 a month for just the photo suite which includes Photoshop and Lightroom. But you can't just, unless you spend around like $300 to permanently buy the app, you can't just buy the app um, 
and just have it um, unless for somehow you found um, you know someone has a file that's technically legal but we're not gonna go into that so what I did did say is this is much more easy to understand from someone who doesn't have a whole lot of photo experience you know you can play with these and you can make something that looks quite nice to everybody that you can quickly upload Instagram and anything that you're on Flickr, Visco, um, you know, Shutterstock if you're into Shutter or into stock photography. So all of these are nice, but the biggest thing that I think is the element of community with uh, the Adobe Lightroom suite or Adobe Lightroom because if you go to the home, here you'll see they have all of these tutorials, but even more than that, they have these beautiful photos that everyone else had so you can just hover over see what a photo looks like before and then you'll see it after and if you like how the photo turned out what you can do is you can just save that preset and then you can use that preset in your own photos so you go back to where you were uh, in the editing as you'll see presets now these are saved presets of mine and I didn't create any of these, but I can just easily throw these on, and I had to, didn't have to do any work to create these. But it'll do something. So, like, let's say this that that looks nice, keeps the light in the flowers, you know, beautiful looking, and that's all I had to do. And let's say I did a batch photo uh, of maybe 50 or 60 photos for a shoot of somebody. It takes a long time to edit them if I'm trying to run through them quickly. Then I can just throw a preset onto them that I know is going to look good, know that I've seen time and time again, and that'll save me a lot of time when trying to do the whole editing process because that's usually the longest part. Um, that element of community is not as easily found with Affinity Photo. Basically, it's you and the app. You can download LUT packages um, and or LUTs as they're also pronounced. Um, and then that's just a preset that you can just put onto there um, But it's not as easy to find them and it's not as easy to get them onto your photo but I would say that again, this does incorporate a lot of the Photoshop elements that Lightroom does not have so to be able to do both within the same app is very powerful while the other one you're having switch back and forth back and forth so I think it is nice to have your entire workspace just in this one app and then there's a whole lot of other details that I'll go into in later videos you know such as um, tone mapping uh, working with the personas the liquify personas is just a kind of cool feature I'll go into LUTs into how to bring them out and everything but this is just an initial of just kind of see what it looks like and this is what you get for fifty dollars which is amazingly cheap for how powerful this is and this was just kind of created by some people who wanted to create a photo editing app that is powerful that is strong that can help somebody who's just starting out and doesn't compromise but is still affordable and doesn't break the bank for somebody so this is affinity photo and this is Lightroom just so you have an example so you can see let me know if you have any questions about some other differences between them this is and again this is just a very simple look at just some of the color correction um, some of the balancing you know in post that you can do nothing with the actual creative ability of changing the pixels you know editing out spots and making superimposing pictures on one another double exposures or anything like that all right so thanks for watching like comment let me know if there's anything else you want to know thank you